All right, everyone, today we're going to be talking about relativity, how depending on your frame of reference, things can be appearing differently. Let's look at this example. An airplane is headed due north and its airspeed indicator shows that it is moving through the air at its maximum velocity, 240 kilometers an hour. If there is a 100 kilometer an hour wind east, what is the velocity of the airplane relative to the earth? Okay, so even though through the air, this airplane Wow, I don't know how to draw an airplane. <laughs> this airplane is going uh, 240 kilometers an hour north. What we know is relative to the earth, it's also getting dragged by the wind. The wind is pushing it to the east uh, 100 kilometers an hour. Okay, so from the earth's perspective, what we're gonna be doing here for part A is we're going to find, we're going to just do Pythagorean theorem, 240 and then 100. And then we're going to figure out what this is and this angle. So I'm going to put this into my calculator. 240 squared plus 100 squared and the square root of that. And we get that the velocity of this is going to be 260 kilometers an hour. But velocity also includes a direction, so we need to add, include direction. Uh, I guess let's do this angle here. So tan inverse opposite 100 divided by 240, which is equal to theta. Then we can say at, oops, well, let's far first find what theta is. Tan inverse 100 divided by 240, uh, 22.62, 22.62 degrees. So we can say, at 22.62 degrees, and we can say east of north. East of north. Okay? Because we can see this is north, and east of north, 22.62 degrees, is going to give us the direction that this is going to be looking like from the Earth's perspective. In what direction should the pilot head to travel due north? Uh, what will be her velocity relative to the Earth? Okay. Very good. So part B now says, we know that this airplane, even though it's trying to go north, is going to be dragged by the wind a little bit and start to drift off to the east like this. So we want to be able to direct the plane in a certain direction so that when it travels, it's able to travel just straight across. So we want the plane to be directed somewhere this way so that it fights against the wind. So we know the plane is going to be going at its maximum velocity, 240 kilometers an hour. And what we should also know is that we need to cancel out the 100 kilometer an hour winds that are trying to push it to the east. So we should know that this leg here should be 100 kilometers an hour so that when it travels, it cancels out the wind and it's able to travel straight up. Okay. So even though it's traveling, it's going against the wind, we can find that whatever this velocity is, I'm gonna call it VY, is what her velocity will be um, from the Earth's perspective. So oh, let's do a little bit of algebra. So we know Vy squared is or is equal to 240 squared minus 100 squared. So we can see that Vy is equal to let's do math real quick, 240 squared minus 100 squared, and then the square root of that we get 218.2 .2 kilometers an hour. That made sense. Mm -mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay, in what direction should the pilot head to travel due north? Oh, okay. So, oh, what will be her velocity relative to? So, in what direction should the pilot head to travel? Oh, so we need to find what this direction was. Sorry, I missed that. So, she's going to be directing the plane at an angle of, let me just do this, tan, or no, we're not going to use tan for this. We're, let's use sine for this. Sine inverse is equal to opposite 100 divided by 240, which is going to give us theta. Let me put it in my calculator. Sine inverse 100 divided by 240, 24.6. And this is going to be west of north. Okay, west of north. Okay. 
24.6 degrees west of north. That way we can cancel out some of the wind and then we'll get a better answer. Okay. 24.6. All right, let's continue. A pilot drops a package from a plane flying horizontally at a constant speed. When the package hits the ground, the horizontal location on the plane will be blank. Okay, so what we have is we have this plane, right? And it's going at a constant velocity. It drops this package. And we know when it drops this package, it's going to land something like this. So we want to know where is this plane when the package lands right here. And what we should know is the uh, velocity of the package uh, in the x direction is going to be the same as the velocity of the x direction of the plane. So when it lands right here, the plane will be directly overhead, okay? So it'll be uh, over, the, over the package here, okay? All right, let's move on. A swimmer can swim at a speed of 0 0.7 meters per second with respect to the water. She wants to cross a river which is 50 meters north and has a current of 0 0.5 meters per second east. If she wishes to land on the other bank directly at a point directly across from her starting point, in which direction must she swim? How long will it take? Okay, so let's draw this out first. So what we have, we have a river, uh, the current, the current here is going to the east, 0 0.5 meters per second. We know this is a total of 50 meters. So we know if she wants to go directly across, she needs to swim in this kind of direction, okay? We know she can only swim uh, 0 0.7 meters per second, so 0 0.7 meters per second. But what we should also know is she needs to cancel out with this current. So she needs to go 0 0.7 in this direction, where in the X, she needs to go 0 0.5 meters per second, the opposite of the current, okay? In what direction must she swim? So let's find what this direction is. So I'm going to do part A. Uh, this is going to be sine inverse opposite 0 0.5 over hypotenuse 0 0.7. And this will give me theta. Oh, theta is going to be equal to 0 0.5 divided by 0.7. And we get 45.6. So it's going to be 45.6 degrees. And this is going to be west of north. Okay. How long will it take? Okay, so now what we should know, there's a few ways we can do this. Um, another thing we can do, uh, another one way we can do this is we can find out what this velocity is going to be in the y direction. So that's how fast she's actually going to be moving. So if we use Pythagorean theorem, we know that vy is going to be equal to 0 0.7 squared minus 0 0.5 squared and the square root of that. So let me do that real quick. 0. 0.7 squared minus 0. 0.5 squared, square root of that, and we get 0 0.49. 0 0.49 meters per second. Hmm? Is that right? 0 0.49. Let me do that one more time because it seems a little weird. 0. 0.7 squared minus 0. 0.5 squared, okay, square root of that. We get 0 0.49, okay, meters per second. And now what we know is she's gonna be going 0 0.49 meters per second as she tries to fight this, and she's gonna go uh, a distance, I'm gonna say displacement of y of 50 meters. Okay, so let's find out how long the time would be. So we know 0 0.49, the speed is gonna be equal to distance 50 over t. Now we do a little bit of algebra, 50 over 0.5, Oops, 0.5, or point, I should say 0.49. And we get 102 seconds. Oops, there we go, 102 seconds. Yeah. If she instead decides to cross in the shortest possible time, in what direction must she swim? How far downstream will she be? Okay, part B. So now if she wants to get to the other side as fast as possible, it doesn't have to be directly across, what she should be doing is she should be trying to focus most of her energy 
uh, swimming in the Y direction. Okay, so what she should try to do is she should use all of her energy trying to go straight up like this, 0 0.7 meters per second. And even though uh, the current is going to drag her like this, we should. Uh, what we know is if we're moving in the Y direction as fast as we can, we'll get to the other side as fast as possible. So in this case, our velocity in the Y direction is going to be 0 0.7 meters per second. But also our displacement in the Y is still going to be 50 meters. Okay, so even though there's a current here and she's going to travel further distance, she's still going the same distance in the Y direction. So that's why we can use just everything in the Y direction and figure out how long it's going to take to get to the other side. So now let's just do the velocity, 0 0.7 is equal to the displacement, 50 over time. And now we get time is equal to 50 divided by 0 0.7 and we get 71.43 seconds. So that's how long if she just tries to go completely straight. She's going to get there in 71.43 seconds. But now it says how far downstream will she be? Well, um, there's a few ways we can do this. Hmm, how should we do this? Um, maybe the most uh, intuitive way is to figure out, okay, if she's tr going straight up 0 0.7 and then the current is dragging her to 0 0.5, Let's figure out what this velocity is. So I'm just going to do Pythagorean theorem, 0.7 squared plus 0.5 squared, square root of that, and I get 0 0.86 meters per second. Next thing I know, so velocity is 0 0.86 as she moves with the current. Next thing I know is she's going to get to the other side in 71.43 seconds. So what I can find is I can find what's the total distance she travels. So the distance she travels is going to be from here to here. Uh, so I'm going to do velocity, 0 0.86, is equal to distance over time, 71.43. And distance is going to be 71.43 times 0.86. And I get 61.43 meters. So if I know that this is 50 meters, and this is 61.43 meters, I can find out how much downstream she is. I'm going to do 61.43 squared um, minus 50 squared, and the square root of that, and then I get 35.69. Okay. I hope that all made sense. Okay. Um, all right, I'm going to move on, and watch it again if it didn't. Okay, you're in a train moving east. You roll a ball east in the train. It takes 10 seconds to travel 10 meters inside the train. A person outside the train measures the distance that the ball travels to be 350 meters. What is the speed of the train? Okay, so there's a few scenarios going on here. So we have this train, and it's moving quickly, right? But you're inside the train, and you see that this ball, you roll a ball, and it goes... 10 meters in 10 seconds. So when you're inside this train, you see that this velocity of the ball is equal to be one meter per second. Okay. And now let's draw this other part in blue. Now let's look at the person outside. So this person outside the train, he sees that the, okay, the train is going like this and it's moving like this. And then he sees this ball moving, but he's going to see this ball moving uh, going a lot further than if he's than the person inside the train. Okay, so he sees the ball like this, and he sees that the ball travels 350 meters in a time of 10 seconds. So he sees the velocity of the ball as 350 over 10 as 35 meters per second. Okay, but we're not trying to find the velocity of the ball. We're trying to find what the velocity of the train is. So if this train is going one meters per second inside over here and 35 meters per second to this person outside, that means this train is going to be going uh, 35 minus one, which is 34 meters per second, okay, because 34 
plus this what uh one meter per second here would mean this ball is going 35 meters per second to this person's point of view. Hope that makes sense. Watch it again if it doesn't. But I believe that's all we are doing for this.